What is up guys, John from Lost Rally Games here. In the last video we created a 2D camera follow script which tracked the player through a 2D landscape. This video will be a continuation from that and we're going to add boundaries to the camera system which limit how much of the level is revealed to the player. The approach we'll use is pretty much the one I use in my game Blood and Mead. That game is actually now available to wishlist on Steam so if you guys want to show support or say thanks consider wishlisting that, the link will be below, I'll really appreciate that. I've also just reached 500 subs, so I want to thank you guys who have supported this channel. All right, let's get going. So this here is the scene we created in the last tutorial video, um, where the camera follows the player in a kind of smoothly interpolated way using the loop functionality. So we're going to expand on that today and create some camera bounds. And what that means is, you can see over here, we're exposing a lot of the edge of the world, and we want to kind of limit it so that the camera never exceeds kind of uh, something like that. And the same goes with going up. We can see now we've, um, we've lost a lot of the world below us and in a good platformer, you don't want to create these situations where the player can no longer see the floor beneath them completely. Or at least you want to give them a hint as to what's below them. Because right now it looks like I'm just in the sky and that could be a, a fall to my death. So anyway, I'm going to do that today. So let's pop open um, the camera follow script we created in the last tutorial. And if you haven't seen that tutorial, I'll put the link in the description. So go there and all the information on how to make the camera follow and any other related tutorials on how to make the player control move, you can find down there. Um, so clicking on our camera and then double clicking the um, camera follow script we created. And this is what we've got. We've got the player, which we pass in um, as an object to track. We've got a time ups offset, um, a position offset. And so in this function here, the camera is tracking the player using a smooth interpolation using the lerp. So let's create bounds. The first thing we'll want to do is set up some um, limitation properties for the top, bottom, left, and right. Um, so the left limitation is how far we want the camera to be able to go left, right, top, bottom. So it's gonna be like a square. And what we'll do, we'll create some lines in the debugger so we can see the outlines of that space. So we'll start by creating a bunch of floats. Left limit. Right limit. bottom limit and you guessed it top limit and what we'll do we'll serialize these fields so that these properties are available in the inspector through the unity IDE where we can we can set them there rather than doing it in the code and that will give us the flexibility to change those values in real time to kind of adjust the confines of the box we're going to create. Um, it's just a lot easier to work. Otherwise, we'd be kind of changing these values bit by bit, running Unity, checking if the property is correct, coming back here, changing the value again, going back to Unity, running it. So it's going to take a really long to do it that way. So it's really good to serialize it for that reason. So down here, So down here, I'm going to show you a very clever functionality that's inbuilt to Unity that can be leveraged. So we'll say transform dot position, and this is referring to the camera's position because we are currently on the camera script. So the camera's transform position equals new vector three and um, here, I'm just going to break this over a couple of lines Whoop, for clarity. Whoa. Um, so the first value is the X coordinate. So we'll say uh, math F. So we I'm using the math class in Unity. I'll say clamp transform dot position dot X. And we'll say left limit 
left and right limit and put a comma. So let me now explain to you what's going on here. Um, so what is clamp, first of all? Clamp is a way to limit a value to a particular, um, to confine a value to a particular range. Um, so here, what we're doing is we're saying um, to clamp the transform position X to the confines of the limit left and limit right. So transform position X can only ever be between the left limit and right limit. Okay, so that's what clamp does. Um, it clamps it between these two values. That's the best way I can describe it now. And we'll do the same for the transform position dot Y. Um, and we'll do bottom limit and top limit. And for the um, Z or Z, depending on how you like to say it, we'll just say transform dot position dot Z. So we're not actually changing Z. We're just focusing on the X and Y because this is our 2D game. And we just got to close that off. Okay, so the camera's transform is this. It's going to get clamped to that. And we're running this in the update loop. So that's going to happen every frame and constantly update. Um, let's actually run that and see what happens now. Okay. So the camera is completely clamped at this point. And you may um, know why. So if we look over here, you can see, uh, let me just make sure that down here, you can see that by default, all those values I created, a left limit, right limit, bottom limit, and top limit are all set to zero currently. So the camera is completely stuck at zero and it can't move. So it's trying to track the player, but it can't. So if I was to actually change these in real time, let's say six for that one. Oh, looky, looky, the camera is suddenly tracking. And let's see where six ends up. Right, okay, so I've kind of just made a guess as to, um, depending on which way you're looking at the camera. So the right limit, I've got it set to um, just like an arbitrary value, but if I change this down, it's limiting it closer to the um, middle position. So let's find a sweet spot and of about there, about there rather. Yep, see, perfect. And we will do the same for the top left and bottom. So if I move the left um, limit down here, so if I change that to like minus one, and obviously um, this will change depending on the game you're, you're working in. Uh, in this particular case, I've got it um, set to those values. All right, so let's stop Unity running and create these, uh, create a better way to manage these boundaries because um, the way I did it just now, dragging this, um, the values in the inspector was easy enough, but um, it's also nice to create a box to have a more intuitive approach and giving you just like a frame of reference to work within. It's also a bit, let's say a bit professional and give you something uh, new to learn. Um, so what we'll do, so I'm gonna introduce you guys to something pretty cool. So outside of this update function, we're gonna go down here and create a new function. And we're gonna call this one, um, it's a void, it's not returning anything, on, draw gizmos and this is an inbuilt unity function which um, does exactly what it's named it draws gizmos um, gizmos are lines and anything you can see in the editor that is used for developer reference sometimes you might create a marker that can only be seen in the editor but not in the actual game that's considered a gizmo so if i just jump back to unity quickly just to show you over here, you have a um, gizmos 
tab. And here you can change the slider to change the um, size of gizmos on screen. So that camera icon is a gizmo. That's why it's changing. I haven't got any other gizmos in the, in the level at the moment, so it's not showing me anything else. But just to give you an idea of what a gizmo is. So anyway, back to drawing these lines. I'll just write a comment. Draw a box around our camera boundary. And the first thing we'll want to do is set a color uh, for the line. Because by default, it'll use a white color and you can easily get that mixed up with the camera um, boundary. So let me just show what I'm talking about. In here, you see in the editor, there's um, the camera itself has like a square. So by default, the gizmos get drawn in that color. So it's nice to um, uh, gizmo dot gizmo dot color. So gizmos dot color equals dot let's say red. And how we're going to do this? We need to draw four lines. We're going to create one line, two line, three line, four line, and we're going to use the um, limits that we set as a reference for those lines. So line number one will be from the top left to the top right. So gizmos dot draw line. It's got two parameters. It accepts a from position and a to position. And it's asking for a vector three, but it will also take a vector two. And because we're working in 2D, let's just make it a vector two and save ourselves writing the Z position for each one. New vector two. And we'll say uh, left limit, top limit. So left top two new vector two. It's a lot of twos. Two vector two. Um, so right limit, top limit. So that'll draw a single line across the top. I'll just run that for you guys just to give you guys an idea of how that's coming together. Actually, I don't need to run it. That's the thing. This should be showing. Why is that not showing? Draw line. Ah, I see. So can you guess what's going on here? We haven't yet changed these values. Um, so everything is still stuck at zero. So it's trying to literally draw a line from zero to zero. So let's just throw in some make up, um, made up values. So let's say, oh, and you can see straight away I've put minus five and it's drawn the red line. So let's say minus five, um, five, and bottom limit can be um, uh, minus two, and top limit can be Uh, let's say three. Okay, so we've got one line running running along the top. So let's continue drawing the other lines. But that'll give you an idea of how we're putting this box together. So we'll copy and paste that line, create a new line, and here we'll say um, right limit. Oh god damn it! Um, top limit and right limit bottom limit. Make sure it's working. Right, okay, you see that? And one thing you may have noticed, which is very, very important here, this code, this on gizmos draw, is actually running in the editor. It doesn't require you to press play and run the scene. It's actually showing in the editor all the time. So let's make another line. And this one's going to be Uh, right limit, bottom limit, left limit, bottom limit, 
The last line will be left limit, bottom limit, left limit, top limit. All right, so <laughs> it looks a, li a little bit complicated and confusing, but it's not really. It, all it is is drawing a two different lines. What I might do, I'll whack a few comments in here. Top line. Right. So we'll just call it boundary line. Bottom boundary line and the left boundary line. So that will hopefully make it a little bit more sense. Let's go back to Unity. That's just updating. Okay, so look at that. We've got a perfect square. So this now, this square actually represents our camera boundary. So what we can do now is if we click on the um, main camera and look at those values, we can change these values and look at that. We can change the um, boundary visually. So what I might want to do is have a play with these. And maybe put it like that. And change this here. So one quick thing to note is that the way this square works is that this camera will stay within the square. So it's the actual um, camera's pivot point, center position, which in this case is the center of the camera which will stay in here. So that's how the, cap the boundary is gonna work. Um, so what I'll do, I'll just run that and see how that looks. Oh, so straight away we can see we have not um, fixed that boundary. So what you can actually do, it's very nice to use Unity's real-time capabilities for stuff like this. So I'll keep maximize and play off. I'll press play again. So what we'll do, while this is running, we'll change these values. And you can see the camera boundary changing. So I want it to be like that. Okay, that's good. Let's check the bottom boundary. We're probably showing a bit too much terrain here. So I might just change the bottom boundary. And you can see what's going on with the camera in the scene view. It's pushing the actual icon up a little bit. So maybe something like that. So we're showing more of the, more of the gameplay mechanics and less of redundant terrain tiles. Like we get it, there's terrain tiles. We don't have to show them all. Okay, so we've got the bottom one set. So let's climb up these. Oh, get up there. So we might just shift the top down just a little bit like that. That way the player can at least find a way down from here without doing what they call a leap of faith in games where um, you can't see where you're jumping. You don't know if you're gonna die, if you're gonna survive. And it's a bit of a no-no in game design. You don't want to do any leap of deaths unless it's part of the story or you want to play it to kind of, um, yeah. So let's check the right boundary. We're getting close guys. We're very close. Okay. So we've got our top, bottom, left and right boundaries set. So here is a very critical thing. Because the, um, the scene view is currently running, the moment we stop this from running, we're gonna lose all the values we just set. So this cool thing you can do is while Unity is running, go down to the um, script that we're editing, click this little icon and select copy component. Then we can stop it from running and you can see the values have already set. It's gone back to um, let me just show you that it's reset. See, um, the camera is no longer constrained. 
So now we'll click back on that script while unit is not running and we'll say paste component values and boom, look at that. We have the new values. Double check that's all working. Boom, done. Look at that guy. So now we have not only a smooth camera follow, but a boundary set. So that's like a very good basis of creating a, a platformer. I hope you guys have found this video useful. If you have, do give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more game dev videos. I've also just had a new Patreon supporter. I'd like to thank you and you'll be receiving all the tutorial source code, project files and assets for this, all previous and all future tutorials. If you guys do want to support, jump over to my Patreon page, linked in the description below. All right guys, keep it indie.